Hey everybody, it's Moonhorse again. Um, coming in just before this video with a little bit of information. We're talking about the University of Utah healthcare program. Um, a friend of mine is not doing well and needs you guys, if you can, to look into this program, donate if you can, help out if you can. They're looking for, you know, donations, uh, people who can do live kidney transplants, the whole thing. This is a very good cause, and it's very, very important. So if you guys have anything you can do to help, or any way that you can help at all, uh, please do. It would mean a lot to me. It would mean a lot to everybody. It's not just me. It's about everybody. Everybody's in this together, so we should all put together to actually do something. Like, if you're interested, or you have any way that you can possibly get in touch with this, or if you're in the area and you can do something to help out, you can contact them at youofyoulivingdonor.org. Or you can contact them at the phone number 801-587-8816. Uh, if you're interested in helping my friend specifically when you get through to somebody or you're talking to somebody, ask for Corinne C. Powell. That's who needs the help right now. It's this person who asked me to kind of help out, not just for her, but for everybody. So if you want to help out, you want to contribute to a good cause, you want to do something good, really help these people out they could use it all right so now on with the show you know what occurs to me after reading about three of these i don't think i accurately explained uh what this is or maybe i did in the first one of these anyway this is just a brief overview before i start going into any of the other stuff um this story is well it's a story it's it's real from what i can tell and everyone uh who said things has said that this is in fact real um so <clears throat> i guess the best way to say this is the way it was kind of described in the very beginning of the first episode. So this is kind of my own basic overview. Um, this is a story of people being involved in a friendship with someone or multiple someones in whatever case you want to look at it. Um, and they are shockingly abusive and psychotic behavior. Um... This is also what a lot of people refer to as the first exposure the internet has had to soul bonding or other kin. This idea of, like, I have another self inside me or that kind of thing. So, I, I've heard this said a thousand times. And honestly, you can look up more detailed information from other people who talk about not only this story, but let's briefly touch on... There's a lot of that. It's like, well, Moon Horse, what's another kin? Well, first off, you have a lovely singing voice. But secondly... Another kin is a person who thinks that they have an animal spirit living within them, so therefore they act as if they have that... Well, not just necessarily animal. It goes into a whole bunch of things. Some people think they're mythical creatures. Some people just think they're other people. But I specifically kind of denigrate it down to animals because it's easier to make this example. Because usually the next thing is like, well, isn't that a furry? No, that's not a furry. See, the difference is, is a furry will wear a, a wolf costume. But the guy in the wolf costume doesn't actually think he's a wolf. The The lady dressed as a fox at the convention doesn't really believe she's actually a fox. It's a costume. It's fun. It's essentially the same thing as, like, dressing up as Batman for Halloween and actually thinking you're Bruce Wayne. These are two different things. One of them is fun. The other, you might need professional help. There's a lot of other kin out there. They get triggered really easily. Um, so, yeah, that's a thing. And this soul bonding is kind of like the, I guess, the very early version of that. Because these people seem to think that they have multiple souls of different people living inside of them. Well, Papa Moonhorse isn't, uh, isn't a spiritual being. He's a unicorn from the moon. And I can tell you right now, I know such thing as magic, kids. I know such thing as souls. If magic was real, I wouldn't be reading terrible fan fiction on the internet. I'd just be fucking rich and happy. I'm not, so there's no such thing as fucking magic. 
Because believe me, if there was a way out of this that you didn't have to do any of the crazy shit you have to do to make things work, pretty sure we all would have done it a long time ago. <laughs> no one wants to incur hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, and yet those people still exist. So I guess magic ain't real. So, <clears throat> that was a weird tangent into magic and spiritual things. I don't know. I'm just, I don't believe in anything that, you know, prove it with science and then I'll believe you. So, soul bonding is basically that. It's the very early form of, or rather, one of the early terms. I don't know if it's a different form than what other can believe. I try not to get into what other can believe. Um, but... <sighs> The, the whole thing is that they believe that they have multiple souls living within them. Sometimes more than just two. More than their own and something else. And from what I've learned from reading about other kin, it can literally be just about anything. I've read people who think that they're beavers. Uh, I've read about people who think they're dragons. I've read about people who think they're rain clouds. Uh, there are people who think they're video game characters. Who think they're movie or television show characters. Who think they're historical people. It's amazing how all the people who go through past life regressions always think that they're like Marie Antoinette or George Washington or like Napoleon. Nobody's ever just a dirt farmer, huh? It's kind of crazy, isn't it? Anyway, speaking of video game characters and all that stuff, we come back to our original point. See, the reason they're using Final Fantasy VII notations as names, like placeholders as names, notations was not the right word. God damn. Essentially, euphemisms for their actual names is because these people believe that they are channeling the souls of a video game character. They believe that in another reality, far off in space and time, that the events of whatever video game that have happened have actually happened in some sort of real-life scenario. So therefore, these people exist on some sort of multiverse or some kind of plane of existence, upon which all life and death means that they are connected, they lived, they died, and now their souls are connected to these people. They're not explaining exactly how we here would be able to channel that information of other people's lives, even though... We can't do that to ourselves. Um, so if that's the case, and we have the ability, our imagination is not really imagination, we have the ability to channel information, events, things, all kinds of stuff that just happen somewhere out in the universe. That these things are not us thinking them, they are simply information being fed to us, and we still don't have the ability to pick up on anything that happens on our own planet. We are, by numbers, the worst race of psychic creatures to ever exist. We cannot even affect our own lives. We can only read what is happening to other people with far more interesting abilities and lives and locations than our own. That is really goddamn sad. So, pushing past the fact that there's a million different questions that you know, okay, you can channel the lives of video game characters. And they specifically are like, we channeled the lives of the characters from Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, but they're not dead. How do you have their souls? I mean, like, the one girl dies, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I've never played Final Fantasy VII. I don't, don't ask me to. I really don't want to. Um, but I'm pretty sure one lady gets killed. But then I think the bad guy dies. Well, so that's two. Um... And I think one guy is also dead, so I guess that's three. But, like, most of these characters, by the beginning to the end of this game, well, they're not dead. And they're, like, you know, young people. So are we to assume that the channeling of information that brought this game into our reality so that these people could see this either happened a really goddamn long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, bump, bump, so, or, it, like, happened in real time. In which case, yeah, you can't, you can't, like, channel Cloud Strife, because if it happened in real time, and he was, like, 20, well, he's, like, 40. So, he's not dead. I don't, I don't understand. Like, did immediately after the game end, everybody get into a horrible car accident? Like, this is not explained 
at all. So, yeah, they're just kind of like, oh, we channel information, uh, souls from all these other things, and that's why, you know, this is a thing. Uh, okay. I don't understand the actions of a lot of people who believe in different kinds of magic because there's, like, so many questions that never get answered. And then if you press the question, you're, you know, you're an asshole and there's no point in talking to you. So it's like, you just immediately give up. I remember having all those questions specifically when I was younger. And I won't lie, I, I believed in it. I think every teenager goes through that. Every teenager goes through that thing where they're like, you know, magic is totally real. And not just because of Harry Potter. But I can safely say that when I got my own... Yes, I had tarot cards. Uh, but when I got my own, and I think I still actually have them around here somewhere, the book that came with them was honestly... And I don't know if I still have that book. was honestly the most influential part of that. Because I specifically remember the beginning chapter of this book, this preface, before they start explaining, like, layouts and what do the cards mean. Um, I forget who wrote it, but they were like, tarot is a game for predicting the future, and they put that in quotation marks. Does it actually predict the future? No. Is it magical? No. Is it something to live your life by? Absolutely not. But it is a fun thing. It's a thing to do for fun, and it's something that you should do as enjoyment. Do not, however, base every single one of your life decisions around this game. Fucking thank you. That shit saved my ass years later. Uh, it just kind of... You know, it grounds you. You don't think, like, I have to have these weird arcane tools to, like, predict the universe. And it's like, who can predict the universe? Who the... F like, who? How? That's the one thing I've learned about a lot of this stuff is, I think it was, was it Danny? And an episode of Game Grumps pretty much said, like, anybody who tells you they know with absolute certainty what happens after you die is either lying or has something to sell. So, yeah, I think that's actually pretty fucking accurate. And it's like, yeah, you're either making that up or you're trying to sell me something and, well, I ain't in the fucking market. So... This whole little podcast thing here in the beginning, even though it kind of goes back and forth, but, I mean, you listen to my podcast, they meander all over the fucking place. It's pretty much to set up the introduction to this story. This is life with these people who believe this. Now, is that to say, this little question thing here, is that to say that all people who believe in soul bonding are psychotic, abusive individuals who will treat people like this and have horribly unhealthy relationships. No. No, I cannot say that. I can't say that with absolute certainty at all, and that's mainly because I don't fucking know any others. I have yet to have met these people. I can say the exact same statement about other kin. Do I think that it ruins everyone's lives? Like, well, no, because I don't fucking know any. I've seen them on YouTube... I've read their fucking Tumblr blog posts, but I don't know them. I don't know any personally. I don't know how they act. I don't go to any of their group gatherings. Do they have conventions? I don't fucking know. That tells you how much I don't fucking know. I know so very little that it is completely inconsequential and does not matter. So, I don't know. So I cannot claim to be an authority on any of this. And, ah, oh shit, I almost knocked something over. Um, and like all the things I read when it comes to stuff like this, I don't claim to be an authority on it. I'm a shit poster. I'm a, f I'm an, I'm a fucking asshole. I'm, I'm a drunk who reads dumb things on the internet because it's funny. And that's pretty much what we're doing here. This is weird. It's fascinating. Granted, some of the stuff I read on the internet isn't just funny. I read it because it's fascinating. I want to share weird stuff with you guys. That's why I do this. It's not about, like... It has to have a specific theme or something like that. I was like, no, if it's fucking weird, I do it. And that's the only reason I did that. That's the only reason I play games. Like, the few video games I've played, they're all fucking weird. They're all, like, weird indie games. 
Mainly because the biggest question that ever gets asked when I read anything, be it comedy, terrible fan fiction, weird stories, any of it is, is it weird? Because I want to know. It fascinates me. I watch a video, it fascinates me. I hear something, it fascinates me. I'm going to share it with you guys because you guys are my friends and that's why I do this. So that's the entire point of this. I'm not passing judgment. I'm not saying, you know, hey, if, if you believe you have the spirit of a velociraptor living inside you, first off, that's, that's pretty cool. But secondly, you know, whatever makes you happy, as long as you're not hurting anybody. Now, if you have a spirit of a velociraptor within you and you feel it's necessary to tape hunting knives to your boots and stab people, well, I mean, yeah, you're probably going to go to jail and fuck you for trying to hurt people. But otherwise, if you're just like, you know, I'm a, I'm a T-Rex, it's the soul that's in my body, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm completely peaceful, though. I'm a pacifist. All right, you're cool. Uh, I'm just, you know, <laughs> don't hurt anybody and I don't give a fuck. You can, you can believe whatever the fuck you want. I'm a unicorn from the moon, bitch. You know? So, <laughs> I got no fucking say on nothing. I just, I do things. So that's pretty much a very meandering way. And again, you listen to my podcast, they're all meandering, of explaining the kind of what we're about to get into. What is all this? I think I kind of explained it again at the beginning of the... I guess the first story, which will probably be the episode immediately after this. Um, I think I kind of explained it in that. I honestly don't remember. A lot of these I record them and then kind of forget. Um, so this is kind of that. This is just kind of a, this is what we're going to do. Is some of it funny? Yeah. I mean, you're reading about crazy people, so, you know, funny shit happens. But on the other hand, it's also weird. And it's also fascinating. And that's what we're looking for. That's that's with a lot of this. It's like a lot of this is... is That's pretty much the, the... I guess you could call it the entire motif of this channel. is We look for what's weird and fascinating. That's why I read a story about a guy who believes he fell through dimensions and found a Beatles tape. That's why I started reading Fifty Shades of Grey. It's terrible. It's fan fiction. It's fascinating that this got fucking published. Um... It's why I fucking read every chapter of, you know, the Michon from God from Princess America, which may or may not be a joke, but it was fascinating. And then the random twist that happened was also fascinating. Why reading any of these, you know, crazy, angry, horribly misspelled, totally illogical, completely insane fan fictions that I've read, I read because they're weird. They're fascinating. That's the whole point. Is it's weird. It's fascinating. If I'm an authority on something... Author that's a horrible word to use, actually. I am not an authority on shit. Let me rephrase that. If I know a lot about something... Like the whole Christian thing... I will try to give you guys as much information as I possibly can... When I say it when I go through it. Now, after actually starting to watch all the different parts of uh, Gino Samuel's thing on Christian, I realize I don't fucking know half of what I thought I knew. And, yeah, it's... Honestly, you should really watch that. Weird non sequitur, totally watch that. It's fucking amazing. Um, give this guy some love. He's really good. He knows what he's doing. He's fucking amazing. That's the same point with this. I watched a little bit of information on this on the whole Final Fantasy house and everything that kind of went around with it. And I decided I needed to see if this site, full of all the information about it, still exists. And yes, yes it does. And yes, you can look it up. And I have decided to read through this parts and parcel just all the way. Every little thing, every little bit, so that's where this is going. And that's what this is. Um, so, I guess that's kind of what a lot of 
this whole thing is. I guess I'll do a, a brief thing. You know, if you're listening to this, you're already this far in it. Let's do a brief overview, and then we'll stop recording this. I'm going to re- I'm going to read the uh, homepage of the site. I started just reading the stories, so let me read the homepage and just let you know what this is. This is like the the page where you can find all this stuff. Um, seriously, just Google Final Fantasy VII House. You'll find it. All right, here we go. All this went down several years ago, starting with the innocent internet friendships and spiraling completely out of control into something that most normal people would find wholly unbelievable. Once I escaped the loonies, I decided to write up my experiences and share them with the internet. Almost immediately, other survivors of this group, other survivors of this group of nutcases, began to send in their stories as well. Naturally, the people who ran this fantasy land cult were unhappy. They deleted live journals, they accused everyone involved of lying, they accused me of inventing it all because I was on drugs, despite their knowledge that I was not. They claimed that personal accounts written were not true, and the same breath began to attack people who had not written them. They hopped fandoms from Final Fantasy to Helsing to Incredibles to Heroes and hopped states, but they have never been able to shake the fact that they are very they very obviously did these things and people have very obviously gotten very sick of being quiet about it. Everything here is 100% true. It is all real. Some names were changed to protect identities of those involved, but that's all. Everything else is 100% accurate. The only instances in which things will be changed is to add facts. It is all true. With this space for updates, you, uh, with, watch this space for updates. If you've made a personal account here and are getting flamed for it, though, you may request it be edited or removed. Uh, There's an update, but I don't really want to read it because if I read the update, it'll spoil more of the stuff that's coming out. If you decide to read ahead from how I'm reading it, I, you know, hey, help yourself. If you want to look it up, do that. I, uh, you know, this is, this is fascinating. At no point in time, anything I've ever read when I read shit that's weird, if it's hysterical, if it's creepy, any of that, uh, if you find it, like, while I'm reading it and you're like, I want to read all of it, don't ever feel like, you know, oh, but, you know, Moonhorse is reading it and... Uh, it'll, like, ruin it. It's like, no, it's, it's fucking weird, dude. If you want to read it, read it. It's fucking amazing. It's, it's... <laughs> it's like the internet version of a true crime drama. This is absolutely fucking crazy. So with all that being said, this is the whole 20-something minute intro that meanders back and forth into what is the Final Fantasy VII house, or the Final Fantasy house. There's a bunch of different little names like that, but this is basically that. And this is what we're going to be reading, or what we're going to be delving into. There are a lot of parts. Uh, I've read about three, but there are a couple of more, and it looks like some of this stuff, I'm not sure if some of it's still uh, operational a lot, because this is old. This is a very old story, but it's also really interesting. Um, but it looks like some of these are actually on different websites. They're like hot links to different websites. Uh, apparently live journal accounts where a bunch of this stuff is also kept, but apparently you're not capable of looking at live journal unless you also have an account, so I guess I'll be making a live journal account. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll just post pictures of dicks. Anyway, uh, (laughs) this is the beginning of this. So buckle up, kids. We're going to go to some really, really fucking weird places. Thanks for watching this little intro, and know that I love you all. Also, seriously, like, comment, subscribe. You should follow this. Follow it as best you can. YouTube's changing shit. make it really hard for people to follow shit. I don't know why. It's fucking weird. Um... And I also have a Patreon if you want to support my strange mining into weird shit on the internet. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, Hell, I might even say your name in the middle of an episode. I might just do that. I've talked about Enigma Habu about 500 times, and he's he's one of my favorite Patreons. So, (laughs) you guys just, you know, knock it out of the park whenever you're ready. Uh, That 
statement didn't make any fucking sense. I just realized I said that, and I don't know why I said that. I'm a little out of it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this, because I'm really fucked up right now. <laughs> okay. This is... I mean, buckle in, kids, because here we go. All right. Love you. Bye-bye.